Welcome to the In-Depth Genealogist Chit Chat Live for the week of 2nd April 2017. Hi everyone, I am Valerie eichler Lair, your host for the IDG Chit Chat Live. We're going to chat today about relative race, long lost family, and who do you think you are? And this week joining me are Terry O'Connell, she's the Executive Director of IDG. Hi Terry. Hey. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I have to introduce you first because you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have Sherry Hudson Passy. She's the Carolina Girl genealogy blogger and she's also a writer for Going In Depth, our digital magazine. Hi, Sherry. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Ready to chat? I am. Good. <laughs> and we also have from Canada, Christine Woodcock. She's also a writer for the Going In-Depth magazine and owner of Genealogy Tours of Scotland. Hi, Chris. Hey, Val. Good to have you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good. We also then have Mary Kircherati of mkrgenealogy.com. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Hi. Great to be here. Good. Good. And I hear you got some good stuff to say. Oh, and then we have <laughs> And then we have yeah. Melissa Barker. She's the archivist at the Houston County, Tennessee Archives and also the archive lady. Hi Melissa. Hello, Val. Jay, I wonder what you're gonna talk about today. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> so let's get started. We've got a lot to chat about. The first one up is relative race. And Terry, I'd like you to share with us what um, your thoughts on the show. That was another good show. This one was definitely um, dripping with emotion. First of all, we'll go on the light side. Team Blue just really wanted to see their babies. <laughs> They've never left them before. It's been five, what four or five days. They just wanted to see their babies. And the uh, benefit for winning was getting to see getting to Skype home basically, which they did win and I was happy that they were gonna to get to see those the kids. Um, however, on the other side, Team Black. Um, we've all been following the, the Greers and Joe's, you know, wish to get to know his family, definitely his paternal family that he never knew and it looks like that's gonna happen as long as he stays in the show. Um, his cousin, and I forget her name, um, the DNA connection, and I don't even remember how far they were connected, showed him his tree. She had found a name that kind of matched the name he gave her. Um, and we've all done a little creeping, and the man looks like the picture that Joe has shared of his mom and dad um, from whatever time period when they had their little fling. Um, how built up the emotions were within Joe. He, even at the end when everybody was talking, he, he just said, it's been a day and I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. It's been a day, Joe, and we are all right there with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it took all he could to, to keep it together at the end there. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping um, next week is a big win for Joe and um, his dad as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary, what did you find or uh, about the show that really stuck with you? Well, um, it, it's interesting. I mean, the shows, the editing is really a lot of it. And they are, are telling a story in this show. And so we are seeing, we're not seeing anywhere near, I'm sure, all of what's happening. We're, we're seeing the story that the producers want to tell us. Um, but the information with Joe and what they provided on the family, what I really saw on that is Joe's cousin put up a family tree and you could see the names on that and the names of living, I'm, what I'm sure is living people. I mm -hmm. could go back and find young children on the 1940 census that were listed on that screen. Mm -hmm. And so some of them are listed and um, I was able to come up with contact information for Joe's dad. Um, so I, I really believe that we will be seeing, um, I, I could tell you the address that they're going to uh, <laughs> in the next episode. Um, no, 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 you're <laughs> under contractual agreement. I, to spill I the won't, but um, yeah, it's, and so 
because there, there's so much um, that was shown. I think releases had to have been signed. Sure. And Absolutely. So I, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be, be seeing, definitely be seeing that. And, and that, that is wonderful. I mean, I think that is just, a fabulous story and and my part boy if i were joe it would have been forget the show uh, I'm, I'm i would be on the internet you know just like mary was in seattle trying to get that contact information and be in the car that afternoon right, right. Yeah. absolutely i yeah. left <laughs> gotta go yeah. <laughs> that's great that's great and sherry we know you've been following joe and team black <laughs> And Absolutely. did you, did questions come up in your mind or wondering? They, they were real quick. He said, um, although we got the third strike, he says, I'm at peace with this information. He says, I'm incredibly at peace. He said at the end, so that finding that information, even though they were at risk of leaving, brought him great peace. But my question mm -hmm. was, who found the information? Did they, did they sit there? and discover it together, he and Mel. Did Mel know to show him that before he arrived? <laughs> I'd be interesting, interested to know, I know they cut the show, but I'm wondering if they sat there together and then suddenly they're like, oh my goodness, look at that name. I'm not sure about that. I'd, I'd kind of like to know. And then Mel had tweeted um, during the live tweet of the show, I'm so glad to have been a part of this. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm sad they showed me crying, <laughs> but she said, I'm so grateful to have been a part of this with Joe. So it'd be interesting um, to know how that, the steps and how that happened. I think they definitely have to be showing, um, or the, the, the families that they're gonna stay at, the host families have to know because they had costumes for, for Joe and his wife Absolutely. and costumes for, for green team that fit. Right. Oh, so yeah, that fit. They, they, know, <laughs> they know who's coming, what they look right. like, what mm -hmm. size yeah. they are. Yeah. So um, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me that they yeah. were able to reconstruct. And so, th and so then are they, that are they scripted training. then to show them, okay, this is, this is how you connect and this is what we need you to show them. I don't know. It'd be interesting to know. Maybe there'll be some follow-up afterwards. All I have really to say good. is Team Black. Yes. We want you to come and talk with us exactly. after this is done. Exactly. <laughs> I'll send no, out that please. invitation on Twitter and see if we can get him yes, here. <laughs> uh, Chris, um, what what comments or what team did you kind of to stick with this week? Do you know what? After hearing Sherry um, at Roots Tech meeting Black, I was Black all the way, but I've really, really just kind of connected with all of them mm -hmm. and their journey. But you know what really got me was watching um, when Mel was showing the name and um, said, you know, I really think that might be your dad. It's a similar name. And Joe just said, I've been Googling the wrong mm -hmm. person all this time. And I thought, how many of us have been barking up the wrong tree? <laughs> but you know, when he said first, he said, why is it that name? Yeah. Yes. So it was yes. almost yes. like he knows that name. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt. It was like, yeah. it's somebody that he knows of. Yeah. Because he did say, why is it that name? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. But, and then, too, I wonder, since he found that name now, if he went off on his own kind of <laughs> well we all did we had it all figured out half an hour after the show so i'm sure he did too but <laughs> <laughs> well, when they show at the very end where you know it's you know it's dark and and yeah, yeah. They're on their own cam and and saying good night you know it's like are you kidding i'd pull an all-nighter <laughs> but do they get to because Maybe that that was the question that i had because mm -hmm. That five minutes of Skype with their kids is was a, a unique experience. Uh, yes, so they probably oh, yeah, but you know what? To use the, the, computer. The, the cousin had internet. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd be working around that man. <laughs> the producers have to go to sleep sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so bad. <laughs> 
but we all have we all thinking alike. <laughs> you know? Exactly. But yeah, and she and she was she it has. and was it fair for the red team? Real quick, was it really fair for the red team to get somebody to go in that car with them? Hmm, I don't know. I thought that was so creative. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Wait, but he, he, asked, he asked for the ride. Didn't he come out and say, "Hey, I'm off. Can I get in there with you?" Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I thought him. he would end up being family. Oh. Oh. And he, he like just disappeared. Yeah. Just disappeared. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Too Can't funny. use a GPS, but nobody said you couldn't get some stranger <laughs> to go right. over that. Right. And last yeah. year. <laughs> Last year, the, one of the teams followed somebody. Mm -hmm. The guy said, yes. I'll, I'll show you there and drove them. Yes. So hey, last year, they wore diapers. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was Team Blue last year. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So who um, wrote down what the end results were of who got in first, second, third, and fourth place and who got the strike? Blue first, black Blue first. last. Mm -hmm. I think it was the... Red team second and green yeah, third. Green I third. believe that's that's yeah. the way yeah. that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. I just happened to have that written down. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> it was blue, and I'm so glad because they. And you wonder was that fixed because they wanted to see and talk to their kids so much on Skype, but I think they truly did. You know, come in first, and then it was green, and then red and then black and they got their second strike so right. i really hope oh yeah me too. Me too. as long as they take him to dad's next week i don't care where he lines up <laughs> that's true no, i'm sure he doesn't either <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true he might just want to stay and be left there to tell you the truth mm -hmm. no kidding <laughs> yeah well, we need to bid a farewell to Relative Race and go on to Long Lost Family. Uh, this week is the last episode, but next week, the commercial during the show, I saw it says new reunions. So it is going to be continuing on. Uh, so Terry, uh, tell us what caught your eye in this particular show. So this was another sad one. <laughs> <laughs> All these sad shows. I think I watched the whole thing like with tears in my eyes as I was wa just watching it. So I don't even remember his name, but the, sto the story that really caught me was the the 40-something-year-old man who was looking for his mom last time he saw her. He was five. Mm -hmm. um, the way he remembered it was dad came and picked him up, and that was it. Mom never came and got him. Um, they found a mom. Mom said story that's that's not at all what happened. Um, she was having difficulty taking care of the kids. Called and asked the dad to take them for the summer, which he did. Um, I think she actually brought the kids to him. And once she got home and started trying to contact the kids through letters and stuff, dad told her not to contact them. He was getting remarried and she would just to confuse the children. I was very happy to see that she had letters to prove that. Um, because you know your mind's all are going to go like, is she just trying to save face? You know, we question everything. Um, it was really a wonderful thing just to see. And, you know, Mom, I love you. We loved you. We always thought about you. Davy always, always thought about you. To let her know that she was always there, you know. The point when uh, Lisa told the mother how he would sit outside and look at the stars and the moon and think that hopefully mom was watching too about broke mom up because she said there were many nights that she would just sit. She didn't say she was thinking the same thing, but she would just sit there. And how ironic was that these little boys were thinking that. Broke my heart. <laughs> um, definitely. They're, they're pulling some great stories out of this. Mm -hmm. And I hope that um, him and his mom really do have a great reunion and that their bond continues after that. I really, really was touched by that she had kept one of the letters unopened, you know, from back when she sent it and she got it sent back, return, mm -hmm. return to sender, and let him read it. Mm-hmm. Well, and let him see that it had been returned to sender, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Because like you said, you know, you can say this or say that, but right. there again, she had the evidence. She had the proof. So, Is it, Was dad still alive or did his dad pass? Did he say? 
Oh, I hope he passed. I didn't like him by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I kind of would like to say that out loud. <laughs> go, go back to his dad and say why. Exactly. Why? Exactly. I was so angry at the dad. And mm -hmm. I was so gutted for the mom when she heard that her um, other son had committed suicide. I mean, the mm -hmm. guilt that she must have around that, you know? And there was nothing uh -huh. to do. She tried. Yeah. It's really funny, you know, when you watch this show and you see how they really unravel the stories, because even those two girls, the sisters, mm -hmm. first of all, they didn't know that they had a sister. Mm -hmm. And the, the, you know, the mom is 33 years old. She gave her up. Chances are excellent that she was, you know, into her career. Wait a minute. Then she had another baby five years later by the same man. Right. And then it's like, no, she was a barmaid. And you're thinking, holy cow, how did that get twisted around, you know, mm -hmm. but it's obviously wishful thinking on the kid's part or right. your adoptive parents didn't want to hurt their feelings or whatever, may not have known the story, but mm -hmm. wow. Hey, I do have to say Glens Falls where the, uh, the sister lived. Yeah. My peoples are from there. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. I loved Glens Falls. <laughs> I really liked the way Lisa did her research as well, going in and using mom's, uh, when she did, uh, for the, the man, I think his name was, uh, the brother was Davy. I don't know if he was Douglas, Davey. maybe? Yeah, Doug, Doug. yeah Doug, and Davey. Doug and Davey. And she went in to do it, and she used mom's uh, first name uh, and came up with the C, whatever their last name was, mm -hmm. and was able mm -hmm. to find them that way. And yeah. it just shows you, you know, you can't just go on one because you might get negative results. Right. And you just have to kind of keep persevering and try all kinds of different things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the I do hope, really quick, I do hope those sisters really fun. Oh, them. are they oh, the cutest? Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. So adorable. So <laughs> adorable. Yeah, I know um Chris, you were you liked that part uh the, with the sisters Love out of the, the And uh, I really think they will keep in touch. Yeah. Or or more than keep in touch. I think mm -hmm. they'll really bond. You know, um, I, I, really quick, because then I'll let you and Terry get back to talking more about it, because we got a couple more minutes, Chris. But it's when I saw, you know, it's like, didn't she know about birth control? <laughs> it's like, let's keep having babies and giving them up for adoption. It's like, but th those are the, our true feelings, or my true feelings. Even when I'm doing genealogy research, it's like, well, why didn't you do this? Or how come you did that? Um, and... So it's good to ask those questions, but to keep also an open mind. Mm -hmm. But we can't judge by those standards because mm -hmm. these were the standards of what, maybe the 60s, maybe the 70s. It was all about free love. Almost 50 years ago, right? It was the 60s. So birth control pills had only just come out. Free love. Free love. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to bring it, bring it up. Yeah. You know, so yeah. could... Hey, my grandfather fathered 21, so birth control for us? <laughs> we don't even question it for later generations. <laughs> There may have been um, some part of her that thought, if I have another one, he'll he'll come to me, he'll be, be with me, he'll sure. leave his wife. So it might have been a conscious decision mm -hmm. um, to yes. not use the birth control. It might not have been that she didn't think about using it. She might have thought about it and said, no, because this will get me the result I want. True. So. Well, when, when the one sister brought that up, gee, I wonder if, um, you know, she was in love with the married man and a way to bring him to her, you know, and it, it's like that part of the story is like, hmm, that, that's interesting that they mentioned that. Yeah, I was immediately trying to think, can, can they find these people, these couples, you know, people that they worked with and the neighbors to mm -hmm. find out more about who their parents were as, as people? I hope that they do at some point, you know, mm -hmm. now that they know she worked at a pub, like, mm -hmm. let's narrow it down. What pub was she working at? We could all get together and figure that out. Probably <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> 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 Maybe you start. <laughs> you can get started on it. I can start a lot. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you go down that rabbit hole. I do enough on the hoodoo, Mary. <laughs> Speaking of hoodoo, um, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> good, good roll into that. Good segue. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, who do you think you are this week was with Jessica Beal. And um, I was really, again, touched by this one because, of course, like Terry, it was Chicago research. So, Terry, take the Chicago, <laughs> take the Chicago lead. Well, let me just say... I love hoodoo. 
Uh, it was a good story. It was good to follow. And I was kind of glad to see that we followed a couple stories. Like Jessica went in knowing, like, these are three famous stories and I want to prove. Mm -hmm. So here is my opinion on, on the different stories. <laughs> the ancestry uh, DNA test for her Native American heritage, I would have liked to have seen them test her mother as well. Um, just because she didn't get it doesn't mean mom doesn't have it. So, you know, they were very, you know, she's like, okay, we don't have it. It's a lie. <laughs> but that's not necessarily true. And we will provide in um, our comments a link to a good article by, what is it, Roberta Estes on DNA Explained in regards to that DNA portion. Um, and she basically concurred that there's, this, there's no way to say that this is definitely no, they don't have it. Um, so that was my first thing. <laughs> My second thing was census records, and not to go into all the census issues, but the first census they looked at, and it showed her, um, the Beale ancestors of speaking Yiddish, and she was told because they spoke Yiddish, or because the census said they spoke Yiddish, they were Jewish, period, end of story. Now, yes, it turned out that they were for her story, but I want to warn you that that is not necessarily the truth, because you don't know who provided that information. Period. Um, I have a census record for my in-laws, and it says that the Russian family spoke Yiddish. They did not. <laughs> um, but who gave the information? We don't know. So we don't know. Like, maybe that's what they thought it was. Um, I've asked and asked and asked. Uh, I've had DNA tests done, and we're only talking two generations back. So if there was any Jewish, it would show up in the DNA still. Um, there's nothing. So... Just a caution, you know, kind of like buyer beware. Read everything, read all the records, be cautious. I think those are my two big issues. The other story was, it was a good story as well. <laughs> but I'll leave that one to Val. <laughs> okay, speaking of census, Sherry, can you walk us through and, and just highlight that census part? Sure, show? I, I've noticed that the, <clears throat> the shows this year, they seem to be having the celebrities do a little bit of their own research. Whether they've coached them and given them that script to do it, I don't know. But they are looking at the records. They are looking at the categories. They are looking at what the documents are telling them. Not just having somebody say, look at this, this says your ancestor is. Mm -hmm. So they took the census record and at each column, what does it say, when were they born, um, what country were they from, because, you know, she thought Germany, <laughs> turned out it was not, <laughs> but another interesting thing they did, which we all need to do, is not just look at the names that we're looking for, but look before the name, look after the name, because in doing that, they discovered that there was a sister-in-law who was Jewish, who most likely was Jewish. And so that clued them into, oh, we need to be looking here. Had they just looked at the ancestor's name that they were looking for, they could have missed that whole thing. And a lot of us have brick walls because we don't look at our records and understand what our records are telling us because they're telling us a story. And we need to, we need to gather all that information and we need to say, okay, this is what it's saying. What does that mean we need to do next? And they are walking the celebrities through. They did that with Jessica Biel. This is what it says. So this is might be what it's telling us. This is a clue as to what it's telling us. Now, where do we need to go to confirm that, to continue on in our story? And not just, oh, census record, click, add that to the tree. <laughs> let's, let's think as we get these documents. Let's think and process it through. And so I, I really have enjoyed them doing that this year. And I think for those of us at home who are actually doing research on our own, not just read, but transcribe it, even yes. census records, because you miss so much. I wrote yes. on my own brick walls, because like you said, Sherry, we were just reading really quickly. Oh, yeah, let's click. Let's edit. Yeah, yeah. And you're not looking at all the information. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're reading and transcribing, you're going to take more away from it and retain more of it as you continue your search. Right. Absolutely. You're, you may be, you see holes, you see things, oh, this should have said this. Why are these children so far apart as you're writing down, you know, their, their birth information? Or why was this one born here when this one was born here? 
instead right. of just saying that was my great grandpa i know it click i'm putting them on the tree and not looking at anything else on the record so i've really appreciated them appearing to <laughs> help people <laughs> to to research in a, in a methodic way instead of well then she asked the next yeah. question yes well they immigrated in 1889 yes. in where do i go next or exactly. where should i go and they pointed mm -hmm. her and and true even to this day whether it's my own research is for students or my mm -hmm. clients i make a transcription or extract form right. for every census year and 10 families before the family of and the 10 families after and right. of course even though i'm downloading or saving the images um and i have that you know you don't know who what you're going to find right. for those other family names so great point yeah. thank you and i think there is something about writing when you write something you remember i, I really it. do i really do things jump out at you yeah chris what jumped out at you <laughs> do you know what i'm actually going to defer to melissa because her and i are on the same um level on this one and i know that uh she can talk a, a little bit more intelligently about it <laughs> <laughs> okay and melissa we know you're an archivist. I'm taking the ball. I'm grabbing the ball from Christine. <laughs> Take the ball and, and run. You got a couple minutes. Um, um, I was very, very excited. And I even sat up in my chair and even, I think, clapped maybe uh, when she went to the Mil Miller County Museum. And the reason is this. And I told Christine in a message that I kind of get preachy about this. A particular thing um, when I teach and when I write and when I do webinars about archives I really emphasize museums because there are archived records at museums that genealogists need to check into what I like to say and I hope this is what sticks with people is that museums have a front room and they have a back room is where everything is on display and on exhibit the beautiful the trinkets and everything but there is almost always a back room where there are records archived and so when you go into a museum ask them about their archived records in the back room and so that's what I really wanted to uh, out and say you know museums don't forget the museums Right. Yeah, and, and then having I, done on-site research, that's that's so important. You know, you know, you almost have to go there or have someone else go there. And when I saw that segment, I thought of y'all first. <laughs> yeah, I was saying to Melissa in the message, too, I found records in a tiny little museum in Orc. I mean, literally, you could stand in the front door and pivot and see the whole museum. <laughs> and um, and she was so funny because she said to me, well, you've only got an hour. I'm like, it'll take me five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said to her, you know, my interest really is in um, the men who were recruited for the Hudson's Bay Company. And she said, oh, you're interested in the Hudson's Bay Company? Well, the treasure trove that she went away and got. I mean, I could have stayed there for five hours, never mind five minutes. And it's, you know, without asking or without mentioning it to the curator, you just don't know what's there. But it's such a treasure, such a treasure that they've got stored away. Everybody's nodding. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> well, it's great because I have the museum, which is the archives and the library like a mile from my house mm. Mm. and I've been fortunate enough and and here they I they take quite a few people in the back room mm -hmm. um, but when the first time I was there can I see in the back um, I thought everybody got to do that <laughs> <laughs> but Melissa you're setting us straight that's yeah. good yeah I was able to find a copy of a family Bible in the back room of wow. the museum. if I hadn't asked I would have never <sighs> known it was there they had mm -hmm. hanging files and there it was. Yeah. So, mm. Always ask. Well, I told other, a cousin of mine that turned 102, I told her at, at age 100, you know, um, I don't know if you were going to give this family Bible to your kids, but, you know, uh, I would love to have it uh, or, you know, the museum, mm -hmm. the archives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really liked about um, Hoodoo was when uh, she was trying to follow the story about the ancestor who got shot crossing the river. <laughs> and, you know, she kept saying, mm, no river, obviously didn't get shot. And then all of a sudden, the very last one is she's leaving. She goes, there's a river next to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, reality. 
<laughs> yeah, she was great. <laughs> can, can I ask a question about that particular segment? Yep. When she when she got the when she found out that he was in the prison in Alton, Illinois, and she was at the National Archives, and they sent her to Alton, Illinois, be at the National Archives too. Something there too? No, because the the National Archives um, does not have Confederate records. They have the union, oh, that's right. I forgot, but I all forgot the states you go for Confederate research, you yes. go to the states. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. I forgot that it was Confederate. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I Which, love those Confederate records because they're stamped rebel. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Terry, you and I must have been in the Confederates in our last lives. <laughs> Without a doubt, my friend. <laughs> Rebels so with that, a cause. Nice segue. With Tell us about Alton prison records. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not only Chicago, but then when they show the arch and then the St. Louis Public Library, which I've been to, and the city library is even, I think, even better because I did all city directories there. But when they went back to the prison, and of course, I'm already on all over this on uh, Google Maps to see where it is. Well, yeah, there's the river, you know, and how far away and how many miles and stuff. So I went to uh, look up the Alton, uh, Alton County, the newspaper and uh, where she sat on the rocks there or on the wall, the old wall. But I also clicked on, on the link that I found for the Alton prison Confederate records and um, I've given that link to Terry which she'll put in the comments and it's so cool that Confederate records are online and of course you know I was clicking and I was looking but I made sure that I noted every place that I was and what I found but I found a lair <laughs> and so you know yeah, my last name, married name is Lair. I'm going to be following up to see <laughs> <laughs> where that person is. I'm thinking it's not in our line, but I know what I suspect would be our immigrant ancestor's brother, but I haven't made that bridge yet. It comes down from that line, the Matthias Lair line, because they were in Kentucky, mm. which is this uh, Confederate, this person that was in the Confederacy. And... Uh, so, oops, that is my alarm. Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was going to make an alarm, make a sound. Oh my gosh, how do I turn that off? That that tells us right there our time's up. Oh my gosh, we can talk more. <laughs> Boy, at least I got the part in about the prison and finding my. But we'll Funny. put those links in the comments um, section. And, you know, there's a couple other things too. So I encourage everyone you know to to go out there and google these things or look these things up um this this might open up a huge what you thought was a brick wall and i think most brick walls and and tell me ladies if you agree most brick walls are because you don't know what's there mm -hmm. you don't know what's out there mm -hmm. absolutely so, absolutely I agree but like my phone said, we're out of time. <laughs> so I want to thank each of you for being with me today and talking and chatting about uh, who do you think you are, relative race, and long lost family. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line in the comments section below. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at uh, in depth genealogist.com but it's www.youtube.com first right um just, just search for um in-depth gen on youtube on youtube okay or send us a simple email at info at in-depth genealogist.com so we'll see you all next time and remember go in depth with your ancestors bye-bye <laughs>